स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडे लेक्चर इन लास्ट फ्यू लेक्चर्स वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग द एंगुलर मोमेंटम एंड हाउ वी कैन सॉल्व दिस एंगुलर मोमेंटम ऑपरेटर इन क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स सो फॉर वी हैव डिस्कस दैट एंगुलर मोमेंटम वुड हैव थ्री डिफरेंट कंपोनेंट्स एल एक्स एल वाई एल जेड एंड वी लर्न हाउ टू राइट डाउन द क्वांटम मैकेनिकल ऑपरेटर्स करिस्पॉन्डिंग टू एल एक्स एल वाई एल जेड वी ऑल्सो डिफाइन टू न्यू ऑपरेटर्स एल प्लस एल माइनस एंड एल स्क्वायर हिज आर शोन हियर what is very interesting or important in angular momentum is that the commutation relation that these operators follow for example lx ly or ly lz or lz lz lx the three components of the angular momentum operator they do not commute with each other since they do not commute with each other therefore we cannot define a common complete set of eigen functions for them on the other hand we have this l square operator which commutes with lx ly and lz so therefore we can define a common complete set of eigen functions for l square and any one of these three operators lx ly and lz we continued our discussion by telling that we let us find out the eigen functions which are simultaneously eigen functions of l square operator and lz operator i'll briefly remind you the important uh, assumptions that we had in our previous lecture we defined that let psi alpha beta be an eigen function of l square operator with an eigen value of alpha square h square alpha square h bar square and the same eigen function is also eigen function of lz operator but with an eigen value of beta h bar psi alpha beta now this is how we defined that psi alpha beta be the simultaneous eigen function of l square and lz operator we when we defined this alpha and beta we just su suggested that these are two indices but doing some more algebra we decide we uh, came to this important conclusion that alpha and beta are related to each other by, by this relation that means beta has an upper bound and has a has a lower bound we then defined l plus psi alpha beta and then this function this new function that i am getting by acting l plus operator on psi alpha beta this function is also an eigen function of l square operator with same eigen value alpha square h square h bar square and this new function l plus i alpha beta is also an eigen function of lz operator however the eigen value now is not beta h bar rather beta plus 1 h bar so we see that if we define one eigen function psi alpha beta the other which is the simultaneous eigen function of l square and lz operator the other eigen functions of l square and lz operator can be obtained by action of l plus operator on psi alpha beta so action of psi l plus operator on psi alpha beta gave us psi alpha beta plus 1 and one more time if i apply l plus operator i would get psi alpha beta plus 2 and so on so forth similarly if we apply l minus operator on psi alpha beta i would get psi alpha beta minus 1 and so on so forth then we see that that in this way we can generate all other eigen functions of angular momentum operator but we know that beta cannot go from minus in beta values cannot go from minus infinite to plus infinite rather this has an upper limit and a lower limit we discuss that and we realize that this beta has a maximum value and has a minimum value we define that the value of beta so bit the value of beta went from uh, minus l to plus l 
in the step of 1. So, minus L minus L plus 1, so on and so forth and L minus 1 and L. So, these are the possible values of beta where the maximum value of beta is plus L and minimum value of beta is minus L. We also discussed that if we have to construct a series that will have minus L to plus L in the step of 1, this series can only be formed when L is integer or half integer. So, the maximum value of beta is given by either integer or half integer. So, therefore, all other values of beta are integer or half integer. Now, what about alpha? We also in the course of our discussion, we also discussed that alpha square turned out to be L into L plus 1. So, what is L? L is the maximum value of beta. So, therefore, if I have a particular value of uh, for, for a particular value of L, I can have a def definite value of L alpha square which is given by L into L plus 1 and the beta would vary from minus L to plus L in the step of 1. Now, together, so instead of writing now my uh, eigen function as I alpha beta, I can say, I can rename them. For example, I would tell that since b maximum value of beta is L and alpha is uniquely determined by the value of L. So, therefore, I give this notation here psi L in, instead of alpha and for beta since for a given value of L, I can have many different values of beta. So, I am calling them as M where M goes from minus L to plus L. So, these are generic way to write the eigen functions of harmonic uh, eigen functions of the angular momentum operator psi L m. Please note here m the value of m is actually determined by the value of L. So, therefore, in some cases you would also write a index in the subscript of m calling L that means this value of m is coming because of this L. So, when I have this as the eigen function psi L m or psi L m L I would see what would I get when I apply L square operator on the eigen function of angular momentum operator psi L m L. I know the this would be alpha square h bar square this is how it defined, but alpha square is a L into L plus 1. So, this is what I get as and what about L z? action of L z on this function psi L m L gives me only this m L h bar psi L m L. So, now what we have defined is that that the eigen function of angular momentum operator are not infinite number of eigen functions rather for a given value of L I have 2 L plus 1 number of eigen functions. We will discuss this part a uh, little more. For example, let us say our L is 0. When L is 0, the possible values of m goes from minus L to plus L in the step of 1. So, therefore, I have only one possible value of m and that is 0. So, the eigen function that I have obtained is psi 0 0. When L is 1, m can go from minus l to plus l in the step of 1. So, m can be minus 1, 0 or plus 1. So, in that case the 3 eigen functions that I get are psi 1 minus 1, psi 1 0, psi 1 plus 1. So, 1 1, 1 0, 1 minus 1. So, these are the 3 eigen functions of angular momentum operator when l is 1. Similarly, when L is 2, I would have m is m as minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2 and so on. So, so these are the 5 possible values of m that are allowed for given value of L. But we also know that L can be either integer or it can be half integer. Suppose we take 
and a half integer value of L, uh, call it uh, 0 0.5. What are the m values? m values are from minus l to plus l in the step of 1. So, m is minus 0 0.5 or plus 0 0.5. How would we write it? We will write it as psi half minus half psi half plus half. So, this the first index indicates the value of l the second index indicates the value of m corresponding to that L. Similarly, if I consider L as 1.5 or 3 by 2, my m values will be minus 3 by 2, minus half, plus half and plus 3 by 2. So, the wave functions that I would have are psi 3 by 2, minus 3 by 2, psi 3 by 2, minus half psi 3 by 2 plus half and finally, psi 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2. So, I see that when L is 3 by 2, I have 4 different angular momentum eigenfunctions. You see, I am getting 2 L plus 1, 2 L plus 1 uh, when L is 3, 3 by 2 is 4, when L is half, 2 L plus 1 is 2. So, therefore, I am getting 2 eigenfunctions of angular momentum. When L is 2, I am getting 5 angu uh, angular momentum eigenfunctions. When L is 1, I am getting 3 eigenfunctions of angular momentum operator. So, now what we see is that we have different eigenfunctions coming from different values of L. Please we appreciate here the use of M L as the second index instead of M. Please see here. I can have m as 0 when l is 0 or I can have m as m is 0 when l is 1 or I also can have m equals 0 when l is 2. So, these three were different values of m when they are actually 0, they are different functions. How are they different? Even if they are m index, the second index is same 0, the first index the l is different. So, therefore, to distinguish them psi l m l is more appropriate definition that than psi l m, because in this case we are defining that this particular value of m is dependent on this particular on the given value of l. Now, another thing that we see is that instead of having infinite number of eigenfunctions for a given value of l, I am having a finite number of eigenfunctions. How do I represent them? The way we represent these eigenfunctions are the following. I draw this z axis, I define my uh, origin here. From here, I define my L vector, L operator. So, this is my z axis. If this is my L operator, please remember that this angular momentum is actually a vector operator. So, this is a quantum mechanical operator, but it is also a vector. So, for a given value of L, I know that it has three components L x, L y and L z, but since L x, L y, L z do not commute with each other, so we cannot simultaneously define them. So, we have chosen to define only L square and L z, one of the three components of L, L x, L y, L z, we chose only L z. So, therefore, I am defining my L z axis, uh, z axis over here. If I make a projection of this L vector operator onto the z axis, I see here this would be the eigenvalue corresponding to L z operator. What would this be? So, this one what is the eigenvalue corresponding to the L z operator? That is m h bar and what is this? This is the magnitude of this L vector which can be given as L into L plus 1 under square root h bar. Please remember this square root is coming because instead of L square we are using this L up L here. So, therefore, this square root is, uh, is, is appearing here and instead of h bar square I am getting only h. So, now what has happened is that this way of orienting this L vector the 
this state of the angular momentum has two definite values what one is its l square expectation value is l into l plus 1 h bar square its lz expectation value is m h bar so this is one possible eigen functions of angular momentum operator what are the other ones for example i can instead of drawing this vector l in this way i can draw it in this way in this way my the magnitude of this uh, vector still remains same i'm making it uh, same but when i make the projection to z axis i would see that instead of plus mh i am getting minus mh bar so now this is another state or eigen function of the angular momentum operator so if i am considering l as let us say plus 1 l is plus 1 then i will have three different m values minus 1 0 plus 1 corresponding to m values so in this case what i have done is that there is one here the other projection is here the third one i can draw it uh, just l the third one i am drawing over here so that the projection of this vector onto z axis is is zero now you see that this l vector makes an angle theta with the z axis where this cos theta you can i can give us m divided by l into l plus 1 under square root here this l vector also makes another uh, the angle theta and here in this case the l vector makes an angle of 0 so i can say that this l vector the angular momentum could actually be any if i draw the all possible values of l this would be that any point along this curve would satisfy the l vector but quantum mechanically we know that these states are quantized i cannot have i cannot imagine any possible angle of theta that means here theta can go from 0 when the l vector is on this point and when l vector is on this point the theta is 180 so between 0 and 180 i can of course imagine many values of theta but quantum mechanically all these states are not feasible only a certain number of states that are acceptable and in case of l is when l is 1 there exist only three different states or three different orientations of l that are quantum mechanically allowed so what what are there one is over here when ml is plus 1 another is here when ml is 0 the third one is here when ml is minus 1 so this is psi 1 1 this is psi 1 0 this is psi 1 minus 1 these are the three eigen functions three angular momentum eigen function for l equals 1 how would i go from this eigen function to this eigen function i will simply apply an l plus operator the step up operator will take me from 1 minus 1 to 1 0 and one more time if i apply step up operator i can go to 1 from 1 0 to 1 1 or else i can also come down from 1 1 to 1 0 or 1 0 to 1 minus 1 by using step down operator in this way what you see is that instead of having n number of eigen functions i have only a, 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 a finite number of eigen functions and this way of quantization is known as is called uh, space quantization for this is for l equals 1 if you imagine the, the same plot for l equals 2 then of course you will have five different projections so this will be 2 psi 2 
2, psi 2 1, psi 2 0, psi 2 minus 1, psi 2 minus 2. And what, what are the, so this is my z axis. So, if I make the projection to the z axis, so this is 2 h bar, this is h bar, this is minus h bar, this is minus 2 h bar and this is 0. So, now I see these are the 5 different eigenfunctions of angular momentum when I go from, uh, when I consider L equals 2. When L equals 0 0.5, when L is 0 0.5, I simply have 2 possible orientations. This is my z axis, this is 0. What is this value? This is plus half h bar, this is minus minus half h bar. So, different particles or diff, 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 uh, different particles would have different angular momentum. So, one thing we would introduce now and we will come back to later is when L is equal to 0 0.5, uh, this particular angular momentum is observed as electron spin. So, electrons spin has an angular momentum of 0 0.5 and since L is 0 0.5, it has two eigenfunctions corresponding to this angular momentum. Uh, what are they? They are minus 0 0.5 h bar or plus 0 0.5 h bar. So, these are the two spin projections that we have. One of them we call alpha spin, another we call beta spin or up spin or down spin. So, these are the two different spin orientation for electron spin. And why do we have only two? Because electron has, has a spin angular momentum of 0 0.5. If you have a particle whose spin angular momentum is instead of 0 0.5 would be 1 or 2, you would also have 2 L plus 1 number of uh, different spin functions for that particle. But electron by the virtue of having spin equal 0, spin angular momentum as 0 0.5 has only got two states and we call them as alpha spin or beta spin or up spin and down spin. One final thing that uh, we must uh, remember in this uh, uh, discussion is that here when I have defined L square and L z, these are the two well defined operators that means the Eigen functions. Uh, the state functions are simultaneous eigenfunctions of L square and L z operator. So, when I make measurements, I can get precise value of L square and L z operators alone. What about L x and L y? I actually cannot obtain any information about precise information about L x and L y, because I am defining my uh, state function as an eigenfunction of L z operator. So, therefore, it is not an eigenfunction of L x or L y operator and I have some uncertainty in measurement of L x and L y. To show that what how we represent is that this angular momentum uh, uh, vector operator, we can define it as uh, something that precesses around this z axis. So, so that the L x and L y are not well defined quantities, rather they will have some values at some, so that there is a some uncertainty in measurement of L x and L y. So, this is how we define. So, when I when I define L, L operator, I see that this uh, operate uh, this angular momentum operator precesses around the z axis with a definite value of L square Eigen value and with a definite value of L z Eigen value, whereas L x and L y determination would have some uncertainty uh, in them. So, we discussed about the angular momentum Eigen functions or rather how many different Eigen functions are there, but so far we have not discussed what are the functional forms of these Eigen functions. That is what we are going to do next. But before that, before going for uh, going to discuss that, we would introduce something else that is a new coordinate system. So far, we defined our operator L x, L y, L z and they were defined in Cartesian coordinates. But the angular momentum comes into picture when we have a particle which is which shows a which is which shows a circular motion. And in such a case, 
when we have when we have a system which shows circular motion in such a case it is more it is convenient if we convert our coordinate system from the cartesian coordinate to another coordinate system that we call spherical coordinates so we define these spherical coordinates here for example if you see if i have x y z the cartesian system over here a point in this cartesian space shown shown here has a dimension uh, has has a coordinate of x y z instead of defining in x y z we are defining new coordinate system r theta and phi r is the dis displace uh, distance from the origin to the point in the in the 3d space so this distance is r theta is the angle that this r vector makes with the z axis and phi is the angle that x axis makes with this point with with this uh, vector and how do i get this vector when i make a projection of this point onto the xy plane i get this point and the vector that joins from the joins the origin to this point the vector that it ma makes the angle with x axis that angle we call phi so when you see this uh, spheric, uh, this coordinate system we call it spherical uh, coordinates because for a given value of r if you take all possible values of theta and phi and construct the geometric shape that is coming out you will actually get a sphere. So, what are the values of r theta what are the possible values of r theta phi? So, you see r can be 0 to infinite it goes from 0 to infinite. So, this would simply uh, show the, the size of the sphere theta on the other hand goes from 0 to pi and phi would go from 0 to 2 pi. We would we have looked at this uh, spherical uh, coordinate system and what we do in the next class we will discuss that how we can convert our system from Cartesian system to spherical coordinates and vice versa and how we can define our angular momentum operators instead of the in the instead of Cartesian coordinate how can we define them in spherical polar coordinates. These are the things that we will discuss in our next class. Thank you for your attention.